Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's combined meeting of both uh, planning and council. The first part of our meeting will actually be four public meetings, which we hold regularly to allow for input from the public on various planning matters. And I ask for your patience and uh, for each of the items to be brought forward by our staff. As a public meeting, it holds credibility as we move through our process for planning to the LPAT process, which replaces the OMB. During the first part of the public meeting, it will be open for comment at a period for, for all members here present. There are four public meetings tonight. Council will be listening during the public meetings because no decisions by this committee or council have been made and will not be made until subsequent to the planning part of this, of this evening. Each of the four technical reports will return to this committee at a future date with a recommendation report. But later in tonight's agenda, there will also be an opportunity for committee to put their, their opinions forward. That is post the public meetings. Um, so that will happen during the council meeting, which will be the second part in which Mayor Joyner will be chairing the meeting. But during the first part, which is our public <coughs> meeting process, I ask all of you to come forward at the appropriate time and we will give you lots of notice and you'll be given the opportunity to speak uh, once we've heard the presentation by our staff and each of the proponents if they so wish. Prior to starting, what I do want to note is that all cell phones, pagers or any other devices should be turned off or put to mute so that they do not disturb the speakers and or the flow of the meeting. Additionally, if it's uh, for your information, be advised that the audio and video recording of this meeting will take place. It will be available on our website later this week for anyone who wants to watch the reruns. Anyway, um, okay, so we're moving forward with our public meetings this evening. And the first of our public meetings is a zoning bylaw amendment by, uh, brought forward. It is a zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by Judith Bra. The Planning Act requires under Section 34, Sub 12, that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public in respect of that amendment. The purpose of this meeting is to receive comments and to answer questions from the public regarding the amendment to the Township of West Lincoln's zoning bylaw. At this point, no decision has been made on the proposed amendment and any comments received will be taken into account by committee and Council in their considerations. The Planning Act further requires under Section 34, Sub 13, the Council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions and or at a public meeting or make a written submission to the Township of West Lincoln before the bylaw is passed, that person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Council of Township of West Lincoln to the local Planning Appeals Tribunal, otherwise known as LPAT. Madam Clerk, could you please advise of the method and dates by which notice of this meeting was given? Proper notice was given by way of individual notice dated July 6, 2018. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Ms. Cooper, welcome this evening. Uh, Ms. Cooper is one of our planning staff and will be bringing forward the explanation of the purpose and reason for the zoning bylaw amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. An application for rezoning was made by Judith Bruff for 4996 Elko Road. This application is required as a, con a condition of consent for a surplus farm severance application of B05-2018 WL. Conditionally approved on April 18, 2018 by the Committee of Adjustment. The severed residential lot will need to be rezoned to rural residential with a site-specific exception to recognize an existing accessory building with a ground floor area of approximately 300 square meters, whereas 100 square meters is the permitted maximum, and a residential lot area of approximately 0 0.85 hectares, whereas 0 0.4 hectares is the permitted maximum lot area. The retained agricultural lot is required to be rezoned from agricultural to agricultural purposes only. The retained agricultural lot is approximately 50.2 hectares in size and meets the minimum lot requirement. All agencies who have submitted comments to date have no objection to the rezoning application as proposed and no public comments have been received regarding this application. A recommendation report will be prepared by township staff following input from the public meeting and will be presented at a future planning building environmental committee meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Okay, is the applicant or authorized agent here wishing to speak to this item? 
you're satisfied with the staff presentation on your behalf. That's fine. And that, that is for the record that we've heard from the applicant that they're satisfied. Okay. Now's the time for anybody from the public wishing to speak to this zoning bylaw amendment. Seeing none, <clears throat> and just for emphasis, this may be the only public meeting on this particular application, so if anybody wishes to speak, this is the opportunity. And seeing none, I will confine to table. Members of committee, is there anyone wishing to speak to this? Seeing none, then I'm compelled to read this statement to make sure everybody understands. <laughs> Please be advised that this is a technical report that is being considered by committee and council this evening, and that a recommendation report will be brought, will be forthcoming to a future planning, <clears throat> pardon me, and council meeting. Also be advised that once the planning committee and council have made a decision with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment, that if council, pardon me, and if approved by council, a notice of its passing will be circulated with an appeal period. There is an attendance sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors, which we would ask all present to sign. <clears throat> Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's meeting, that you place a check mark in the column marked Bra, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. Therefore, if interested in observing council or committee meetings on this particular bylaw, one should not solely rely on mailed notices and thus miss the opportunity to attend a meeting. It is suggested that you watch the township's website for postings of agendas to review items that will be discussed at council or committee meetings. The agendas for meetings are posted on the township website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you include your email address with your mailing address and phone number on the attendance sign-in sheet. I declare this public meeting regarding a zoning bylaw amendment concluded at 641. Okay. Our second public meeting for this evening is a zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by the Township of West Lincoln with respect to a correction to the lot definition as contained in the Township's comprehensive zoning bylaw. The Planning Act requires under Section 34, Sub 12, that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public with respect to its amendment. The purpose of this meeting is to receive comments and answer questions from the public regarding the amendment to the Township of West Lincoln zoning bylaw. At this point, no decision has been made on the proposed amendment, and any comments received will be taken into account by Committee and Council. The Planning Act further requires, through Section 34, Sub 13, that Council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of West Lincoln before the bylaw is passed, that person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of committee or council for the Township of West Lincoln to the local planning approval tribunal. Madam Clerk, could you please advise of the method and dates of notice, please. Proper notice was given by, uh, by individual notice dated July 6th. 2018. Oh, sorry. Proper notice was given by way of, in, of advertising in newspaper with general circulation on July 16, 2018. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. This one's a little different. It is a it is a municipal wide a comprehensive zoning bylaw review, and therefore notices were not mailed out individually as the previous public meeting, but were were but were advertised in the paper. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Borma. Thank you. In June of 2017, the Township of West Lincoln Council approved a new zoning bylaw, bylaw 2017-70, which replaced our previous zoning bylaw 7914. The new uh, this bylaw has functioned well over the past year, uh, but staff have identified several housekeeping amendments that needed to be addressed, most of which have been addressed previously. The most recent housekeeping amendment is required to address the issue uh, or an issue that has arisen over the definition of the term lot in our zoning bylaw. The new zoning bylaw has a very similar definition to the term lot as the original zoning bylaw did. Essentially the definition of lot in the original zoning bylaw meant a parcel of land which was created through a planning process. 
such as a severance or a subdivision, or existed on the plan of survey prior to the passing of the original zoning bylaw, which was done in 1979, uh, was deemed to be a lot that was able to be built on. Uh, sometime in the mid 18, or 1980s, uh, up until 1992, there were a number of lots that were created in the township as well as other areas of the region uh, through processes other than the Planning Act and therefore did not go through the test of good planning or approved by local council. These parcels have not been considered lots and are required to undergo some sort of planning process uh, to gain building permits so that the township has an opportunity to evaluate these lots based on their merits and good planning. The township's new definition of lot now could be interpreted to include these lots as it changes the effective date from 1979 to the passing of our new zoning bylaw 2017. Staff are therefore proposing that the new zoning bylaw 2017-70 be amended to say that a lot means or a lot is deemed a lot if it has existed prior to 1979, uh, March 5th, the passing of our original zoning bylaw. And this proposed change will not have any impacts on any ongoing or consents that have been done in the past or subdivisions that have been legally undertaken under the Planning Act. And uh, if the clerk can put on the screen, I'll just kind of show you what we're dealing with here. So this is the original zoning bylaw, and you can see on uh, 3.65A2, uh, a lot is a separate parcel of land without any adjoining lands being owned by the same owners as the date of passing of this bylaw. And that exact language was carried over into our new zoning bylaw uh, into, in this bullet point here. But as you can see, it is referring to the bylaw, the newest bylaw, 17. So although nothing changed, it should refer back to the original zoning bylaw passing in 79. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Borma. Okay. Public submissions. Is there anyone here this evening that wishes to make a comment or submit a written uh, c concern regarding the Township of West Lincoln's lot definition, definition correction? Uh, have a question. You'd have to come forward to the microphone, state your name, and, uh, and just for the record, the clerk keeps me on a very short leash on this at this point. My name is Ann Minen, and I just have a question regarding this uh, separate parcel of land without any adjoining lands being owned by the same owner. Yes. And what if there are two lots side by side? Mr. Borma, would you like to address that, or are we going to Mr. Trouble? Through you, Madam Chair, there's, a, there's probably a couple of different answers, so the circumstances might be helpful. Um, if it was a lot that was created through a severance process after 1979 or thereabouts, um, the, the phrase "once a lot, always a lot" applies. So, if it was if if one of the lots was created through a severance process after 1979, it should not merge with adjacent lots unless there was some language put in the actual decision that says that they merge. That's if it was created through a severance. Uh, likewise, a plan of subdivision, two lots in a plan of subdivision do not merge unless council passes something called a deeming bylaw. And to, to my recollection, in the 12 years I've been here, I don't recall that we've done one. Um, if they were grandfathered lots that had been around prior to 1979, then it's possible they could have merged because of the language changes to the uh, Planning Act that occurred at that time. So it depends on the circumstances of um, the types of lots that we're dealing with. Um, but what I, what I can say, and, and I know Mrs. Minan had uh, reached out to us earlier, um, this process is not intended to impact any lots that were legally created through the severance or subdivision process. If they were legally created through those processes, nothing will change. The impact on those lots is zero. They stay as they are. Mr. Treble, could you go just a little further and just, it's a lot, but you may never be able to get a building permit if the lot is undersized given all the changes in legislation. Am I correct? 
Um, well, once again, there's a couple of different answers. If it is a lot created through a process that is one of the not recognized processes, such as a testamentary devised lot, um, those lots are conveyable, but are not buildable without having discussions around this table and, uh, and an application before council to determine whether it's an appropriate lot. Um, other lots, if they are undersized, may require uh, some sort of special septic system uh, and or a variance approval of council. But uh, generally, if it's an existing lot created through a legal means, if there is a way, uh, we will attempt to work with the applicant to get it to the point where it is a buildable lot in one fashion or another. Thank you. That was for a question that I'd already received on the phone. Uh, any other uh, members of the public wishing to speak at this time? Questions, concerns? Seeing none, I'm going to confine to table. Seeing Councillor Rayner first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Tribble. So what really is the change with this then? If something existed uh, prior, let's say it's a 100-acre <coughs> lot, and it's never been built on. Um, is everything remained the same, or has something changed from 79 to 17, and now 17 to 18? Through you, Madam Chair, if it's if it's an original lot, nothing has changed. Um, the only difference, or the only distinction, is um, two processes that come to my mind that we're attempting to be sure we regulate properly. One is um, a creation of a lot through a navigable bodies of water process under the Beds of Navigable, Navigable Waters Act. Um, if a process of going to court was used, then those lots are not recognized unless there's a proper Planning Act process and a discussion around this table, presumably a rezoning. Um, the other one is testamentary devised lots. There are a few parcels in this township that were created through wills, um, the deeding of lands in a will, and those lots are not recognized unless a Planning Act process occurs. In both cases, um, going back to a comment the Chair made just a few minutes ago, they are conveyable lots, they're just not buildable lots under the zoning bylaw. But if it's an original farm parcel, there's no impact through this process. Okay. Other comments? Councillor Bilsma? Uh, just by way of example, I have one of those. Uh, my uh, original parcel of land was divided, and it was divided according to squares. And the creek that largely um, provided general directions to those squares uh, left a corner of someone's par other parcel on my side of the creek. But because of navigable waters, it becomes uh, a, a lot by itself, a little triangular piece about uh, a couple acres or something like that. But there's no road access to the back of my property and you have to float a boat across the 20-mile uh, creek to get to it. I can't build there, but it is conveyable to me, and I can purchase it from the owner because it's already a separate lot. So that's kind of an example of when you use the navigable waters. So just wanted to kind of give Thank an Thank you for that clarity, Councillor Bilsma. Um, Councillor, are you fine with that? Councillor Bilsma, have you other, any other comments? Thank you. And no other members of the committee wishing to speak to that item? Okay, then. I'm required to say that, please be advised that this is a technical report that is being considered by council this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning committee and or council. Please be advised that once the planning committee and or council have made their decision with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment and if ultimately approved by council, a notice of its passing will be circulated with an appeal period. There is an attendance sign-in sheet <clears throat> pardon me, which is located on the t table next to the exit doors, which we would ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's council meeting that you place a check mark in the column marked lot definition if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. Anybody interested in observing council and our committee meetings about a particular bylaw should not solely rely on mailed notices and thus miss the opportunity to attend the meetings. It is suggested that you watch the Township's website for postings of agendas to review items that will be discussed at a Council and or Committee meetings. The agendas for meetings are posted on the Township 
Group's website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also posted on the website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you include your email address with your mailing address and your phone number on the attendance sign-up sheet. And just for further clarification, those sign-up sheets are not available to the general public as part of the record for this meeting, at least not the information, the personal information. It is uh, didacted. So this meeting, this public meeting with regard to a zoning bylaw amendment is concluded at the hour of 6.54. Our third public meeting is with regard to a site alteration permit uh, for, with respect to inputting of fill on lands owned by Mr. Adam Knuth on the property municipally known as 8951 Concession to Road Caster Center. The purpose of this meeting is to give opportunity for the public and members of council to provide comments and or questions regarding the importing of fill on lands owned by Mr. Adam Knuth on lands municipally known as 8951 Concession 2 Road, Caster Center, and approval of the site alteration permit. This is to advise oh, that, that notice of the public meeting, which was dated July 6, was circulated by individual notice to properties within 120 meters of the subject lands. Mr. Treble, I understand that you've been charged with giving us the details behind this application. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I know the applicants here as well and, and will be able to uh, expand on the material I give you, but I'll, I'll start. Um, the proposal is under the site alteration bylaw of the township that was passed in 2016. Um, in accordance with section 142 of the Municipal Act. So this is not a Planning Act discussion, this is a Municipal Act discussion now. Um, but the bylaw that Council put in place at that time more or less gave three levels of approvals that uh, were required. If there was less than 500 cubic meters of fill being imported to the Township on a property, on one individual property per year, that could occur without a permit from uh, township staff or council. If between 500 cubic meters and 1,000 cubic meters was being imported per year, then a permit from township staff could be considered subject to being sure that, a pro that the site alteration was appropriate and being done for the right purposes, i.e. to enhance agriculture. The third level is if an application is over a thousand cubic meters, then it requires the approval of Township Council through um, the bylaw as written. It indicates that Township Council will consult the neighbors before making a decision. Hence, Madam Chair, the reason for the, the hearing tonight. This particular applicant um, had commenced the hauling in a fill and had initially indicated to the township that it was topsoil that was being imported, um, but the soils report did not support that claim. And staff understand that somewhere in the range of 1,000 to 1,200 truckloads of fill were actually imported um, before um, tonight. Upon a, a being approached by township staff about concerns about uh, non-compliance with this bylaw, the applicant did cease the hauling of fill immediately and has been cooperating with staff ever since. So 1,000 to 1,200 truckloads is in the range of 10,000 to 12,000 cubic meters, so well in excess of where it is to require an approval from uh, Township Council. As staff understand it, the proposal is to fill in some low spots in the field and improve drainage immediately behind the barns that are on the subject lands. And I don't know, Garrett, through you, can we pull up? The, the property in question is, is identified on the page. Here it's, it's largely an agricultural property with some barns on the south side near Concession 2 Road. Um, and the fill is actually proposed immediately behind those barns. And, and the next photograph, Garrett, actually sort of zooms in and, and gives a uh, a um, circle of the area that's that's been affected to date. 
So generally, Madam Chair, within the area that's that's in the red circle is is where the uh, the fill is being concentrated. You can actually see a couple of of areas where um, it is lower, and that's an area where the focus of the fill has occurred to date. It's my understanding through working with the applicant that his goal is to improve the land for agricultural purposes and to improve the agricultural productivity of the land. And I believe Mr. Knuth can explain more fully how he intends to achieve that. Um, so there's really two parts to this application, Madam Chair. There's dealing with the, the amount of fill that's been imported to date, and there's also more fill proposed. Um, staff understood initially it was in the range of up to another 1,000 truckloads of fill, another 10,000 cubic meters of soil that would be coming to the site. I believe that has been refined a little bit since the application, and so we'll likely hear a bit more refined number from the applicant uh, later on here. Perhaps, Madam Chair, at this point I can turn it back to you after I just mentioned that I have received uh, an inquiry verbally from the neighbour to the west expressing concerns about the impact of the fill on drainage and I think generally there is a concern about drainage and, and what, what the change to the alteration of the soil will do to drainage patterns in this area that needs to be given consideration, Madam Chair. So that will be with regard to drainage and, and riparian rights Correct. for the abutting properties? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Treble. This is the first of these uh, hearings that we have held since the passing of the bylaw. Uh, is there any members of the public who wish to, well, no, sorry, pardon me, I, I've just about missed it, the agent and or owner of the properties wishing to speak to this item? <coughs> Mr. Knuth, I only say that because that was the applicant. So come forward. <laughs> Actually, it's just a it's just a podium, and you're more than welcome to use it. And I'm going to uh, call it chopping block. So <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not good at public speaking, so I'm going to have my paperwork here. I've submitted this to uh, Mike Rayner and Brian Treble. Um, the reason for the site alteration is to fill in lowland and improve soil quality and increase workable acreage for agricultural purposes. Um, what I'm proposing at this point is that the site has been altered. Ha altered has to date received plus or minus 1,000 loads of clean soil. The definition of the soil is obviously in discussion. Um, as per the Township of West Lincoln bylaws, a council meeting is required for loads of soil that exceed, I believe, 500 meters, cubic, cubic meters. meters, is it? All right. Um, the work that is required to finish the site alteration will require an additional three to 400 loads of soil to dress the areas that have been already altered a fair amount of the leveling of pre-existing soil will be required to create an adequate grade during which the new soil will be delivered to complete the project. Um, all pre-existing ditches will be maintained to ensure proper drainage to the site and any adjacent addresses. I have myself been in discussion with Rick Morley, the uh, adjacent property and a property, sorry, and um, any drainage that has to be rectified or continued will be done in a proper manner. Uh, one thing that wasn't brought up, maybe I'm going to kick myself for saying this, is there obviously has been concerns for the road, and uh, concerns for the road will be addressed in such a matter that ensure little to no further damage is occurred during the completion of the site alteration. Traffic of trucks will be significantly reduced, and trucks will be required to enter in the westbound direction of Concession 2 and leave in the eastbound direction of Concession 2 and vice versa, versa to ensure trucks are not traveling along the shoulders of the road. There has been concerns that I've been in contact with Brian Trevel for road damages that have occurred so far. Um, the payment of $5,000 will be arranged uh, for current damages that have incurred due to truck traffic. Uh, most importantly, any work that is to be carried out will be done so in a matter that complies with the Township of West Lincoln and will be done so in a matter that's full or with full transparency. So. Thank you. I know you said you've uh, su supplied that to one of the councillors as well as to Brian, but could we ask for you to submit one of those to the clerk just for the record? Yes, um, if I have a contact with the clerk, I guess. Oh. All right, perfect. You, okay, so that, that's no longer a requirement. One time I ask and you don't need it. <laughs> Boy. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Knuth.
Um, Everybody stay up here is going to want to grill me. Actually, you know what? This is a public meeting. It does have some requirements to be done, but it, it's not a grilling, and everybody gets a chance. Right now, once you've put your position forward, it's now an opportunity for anyone from the public to speak, and then if any, and then any member of committee who wishes to speak to you, and I promise you that you will not be grilled oh, I'm just in any way. <laughs> I will hold court such that no one will do it until after the public meeting. Oh, <laughs> Watch me, Mike. Watch you. All right. Mm, I'm going to members of the public. Uh, Ms. Right? I just had a quick question. After that. Um, okay, members of the public. Uh, is there any members of the public who wish to speak to this item? Sir, if you'll come forward, state your name and address, and uh, then your concern. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Morley. Uh, I live uh, I own the property <coughs> to the west of the Canute 9019 Second Concession. Thank you. I had spoken to uh, Mr. Trouble. Um, I raised my concerns about drainage. Uh, after speaking with Adam, I have no concerns. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thank okay, you very thank much, you. Mr. Morley. Uh, is there anyone else from the public wish <clears throat> pardon me, wishing to speak to this item? Okay. Seeing none, then what I would say is that I will remind you all that this may be the only public meeting held with regard to this application, mm -hmm. and anyone wishing to speak should do so now because without speaking at a public meeting or hearing, you may not get a second chance. Although this is not a public meeting under the Planning Act, your liberties may in fact no longer uh, be put forward if we don't hear it this evening. <clears throat> Having said that, and seeing no one else, I'm going to confine it to table and ask for members of committee. I know the mayor's already asked to speak. I'm creating a speakers list, so Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was uh, just going to say to Adam that his face looks like mine, and we were grilled already this weekend by the sun. So my question is that for Mr. Trouble. Roasted. roasted. You're right. Grilled, roasted. Yeah. <laughs> well seasoned. Um, Mr. Trouble, my question is for you. Um, Adam talked about a $5,000. Is the $5,000 for damages that have already occurred, or is the $5,000 for a, uh, a damage deposit? Through you, Madam Chair, um, the the five thousand that Mr. Knuth is referring to is an amount that's been generated by public works staff to correct uh, a few repairs that had to be made to um, uh, Concession Two Road as a result of the a thousand to twelve hundred trucks to date. So the the first five thousand that, that is being mentioned by Adam is. Um, to correct repairs that we had to incur and, and offset us to basically bring us to zero. There is also under the um, site alteration bylaw the authority for council to collect a deposit of $5,000 with respect to any decision that you make so that we have a bit of security in the event that there is an impact to the township. We have never used that provision but certainly I would suggest with the volumes we're talking it would be appropriate to be collecting that figure just so happens to the same number, but there is certainly a five thousand dollar figure that can be collected going forward too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trouble. You read my mind. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Tr uh, Councillor Trombetta. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I listened to uh, Mr. Knuth's presentation. Just wanted to say, you know, I commend you for coming up here and being honest with Council. Um, a lot of people in this municipality do things and uh, don't come here and are not honest uh, or don't actually present themselves and being honest with uh, council. Um, you've identified some of the issues that are out there and that, that goes a long way, especially with me. Um, There's one thing I'm trying to uh, stress is that, you know, we, uh, we are here, we are here to listen and uh, to be honest and come up and forward. It, it does go a long way and uh, we're here to help. So. I just wanted to say that, make those comments on the record, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Trombetta. Councillor Ganan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a couple of questions uh, of my own, but before I do that, um, I had an email this afternoon um, that came from a, a gathering, a, co 
of uh, farmers and neighbors who did not want to um, be in opposition to Adam's uh, application, Mr. Knuth's application, but did want this council and the mayor to fully discuss some of their concerns about generality looking at what's going on. So I'm going to read that first before I ask my own questions. As a concerned farmer and neighbor, I think it's important to address the various issues regarding the 1,000 loads of fill that is proposed to be dumped in Caster Center. To begin, who paid for the previous damage that was a result of illegal dumping at this location in the past? There was damage to ditches, road shoulders, and the road. Rules and regulations of half-load season were not enforced or followed. Therefore, this damage occurred and someone would have to pay for it, question mark, taxpayers. The road was not designed for a 1,000 trucks to use and consequently damage will continue to occur and it will be taxpayers who are paying for the repairs yet again. Secondly, allowing for this to transpire will create a precedent setting for other applications, thus opening the door for West Lincoln to become the next dumping ground. Not only that, but it will have an effect on drainage and or restricting drainage between neighboring lands, which could lead into conflict between neighbors. Thirdly, who's going to monitor and enforce any disputes or illegal dumping? And who's going to be paying for an inspector to be on site? Taxpayers? Question mark again. As well, who pays for the disposal and cleanup of any contaminated soil if the owner was to go bankrupt and the soil was contaminated? Again, taxpayers, question mark. It is impossible to test every load or ton of soil that will be dumped. Therefore, how can we be certain that this soil is not contaminated to begin with? Overall, it is important that we strongly consider how this situation is going to negatively affect the taxpayers and only be beneficial to the homeowner. So I enter that just for thought and discussion among council and staff that those are not my personal opinions, uh, but they certainly are uh, food for thought in terms of this one small issue going forward across the municipality. And I think their concern was mostly about setting a precedent for future applications. So. I've done that duty. Uh, my question, though, is not grilling, but I am asking about soil. So if you would like to come back, maybe you can answer some questions, please. Mr. Mr. Knuth. Knuth, the questions will be directed to you. And they hopefully will be. You, they will not be. Not at you. But, but you know, you. you know it won't be grilling. It's just going to be question asking. So. Yep. Thank you. Just a small, small roast. roast. Not a all. small roast. Not a small roast at all. But. I don't know much about farming and I don't know much about soil. So I did look up some documentation. So um, I looked at the Ontario Agricultural Food and Rural Affairs um, importation of soil into agricultural land document. And soil knowledge and innovation, the New Horizons, Ontario Agricultural Soil and Health Conservation Strategy. And then soil health in Ontario and all of those things. And I found definitions of fill dirt and fill in general and clean fill and even Councillor Rayner's gumbo, which is mostly in the United States and the southern states. I've heard, but I've heard the term gumbo. You've heard that yeah. term. And, and you can find a definition of topsoil, but your report talks about soil fill. And for the life of me, I cannot find that. And so what is the soil that's coming on your property? For me, I feel that the soil is clean. I am not a soil expert by any means. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's topsoil, it's clean fill, it's this, it's that. I, honestly, for me, I, I don't even personally work the land myself. As a fourth generation farmer, my best interest is to make sure that the, the property or my, my land is good for future use. Um, the guy who actually works my land is here. I'm not going to name him, but he is actually here, and I have been in contact with him, and I wouldn't do anything that I felt was going to affect what he's doing for his actual crops. So as for the definition of it, I can't tell you. Again, I'm not an actual soil expert. so. But you're satisfied that it's I clean. personally am satisfied, yes, with what has been brought in. If I felt like it was something that was going to affect my property, trust me, I'd be the first person that would say don't do it. Okay. So, And again, I'm fourth generation. I'm not going anywhere. I'm honestly not going anywhere. If it was this all, I'm well, I felt that you had already addressed some of the concerns that yeah. were, were brought up in the in the um, email that I read. But I did want I did want to get that into the record. And because can I just that was clarify one thing? I don't know. Obviously, you said it's not your comments, no. but whoever said that it was brought in not during full load season. Yeah, I don't know when is the half load season. Just so we can clarify, when is half load season end? I'm pretty sure it's May 31st. I think it's, no? I think it's it, April. 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 Uh, it, loads were coming in after that. So if there's any concerns after that, the loads weren't coming in. I wouldn't have done anything that wasn't. No, the it. loads, it, half load season is ends at April. So it happens over the winter period. So. That's what I'm saying. There's no loads brought in before then, though. So yeah. it, whatever the, concerns are addressed, yeah. and obviously you said it wasn't your. No, it's not mine. I just, I'm just, I just saying to clarify that, that it wasn't brought in before 
the okay. full load seasons brought into effect. So. Okay. So the other question I have is about about soil as well, and, and I don't know, but I, I recognize that that there was certification that came with the soil, but it was dated 2017. So how do we know? How how does the public know? that the soil that is still coming in or the soil that you propose to bring in in the future is going to be of, of a high quality as well. That's an, old, that's an old documentation saying at the source that soil was, you know, was clean and it was proper to use it. I worry about how we move forward from that. And generally that would be a concern of my own too. Um, honestly, the contractors that I have on there, it's, it is ultimately my responsibility to make sure that it is, but I also kind of rely on what they're saying to me too, so honestly I have to go by their word. I, again, I'm not a soil expert, so if there's any concerns about the actual soil or what it is, or again, we come back to the topsoil, clean fill, any of that, there's those questions I, I honestly can't address. Maybe you could get to the end. I think what Councillor Ganan is looking for is do you have a certificate of approval for the source of the fill? There is soil samples, yes, but obviously she has concerns that they're from 2017. No, but did you, did you get the, the soil certified because that's what she's asking? I believe so, yes. From I yes, they are. Okay. okay. And if there's any further questions on details on that, like I said, my contractor's here too, you can address those questions and that's the best I can say here. Right? Okay. So. so is your contractor the Brooklyn Clean Fill? Yes. Thing? Because I, I couldn't find anything about that company either. As I'm trying to find information yeah. to try to ask my questions, I, I couldn't find that. Is that a local company? I believe so, yes. Okay, I'll leave it for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there another question? Oh, there may be, but Councillor Ganan has just exhausted her current list. All right. So we'll move to Councillor Bell, and then uh, through Madam Chair, I got to. If Adam wants to come back. Oh, Adam. <laughs> Adam, the questions were. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, if at any time you want to bring your contractor, your agent, or anyone else up to assist you it's in answering the questions, coming up. I'm not putting anyone on the spot. It's, so. it's your land. It's you that's hired them. If you don't want them there, we're not going to make you bring them. No, forward. I'm not. I no, no, but any. just so that yeah, we yeah, make yeah. it clear, that's all right. what we're doing here now is is a formal part of the meeting, and I don't want to sound like a stickler, but we're letting you make your best case. Yeah. So if you're not the best person to answer the questions, you've got your people here. Yeah. So when someone asks you a question, it would be better to be able to say, yes, it's clean, rather than I believe. Actually, speaking of, because I just got into this piece of paper, and I'm like looking at it, I'm like, uh, I don't know. There you go. Okay. Sorry, we're just trying to help you through no, this that's, process. that's fine. Like I said, I'm going to give you the best answers I have, but if there's certain questions, there's certain things that I don't know, right? So. Um, Richard Grant. And, and your affiliation with this file, Mr. Grant? I work with the contractor they're bringing in the dirt. Okay. So you're with Brooklyn Cleanfill? Brooklyn Cleanfill. Yep. Um, regarding your thing about the date from 2017, most of the companies that do the sampling, they sample it, and sometimes these things sit for a year or two before they can find a property to move it to. So as long as we have paperwork that says that it is clean and all the parameters are met, there's no heavy metals and stuff like that, we're good with that. Yep, you've got the floor, okay. Councilor Ganan. Thank you for that answer because that's actually, you know, what I'm trying to find out is, mm -hmm. is not to be offensive in any way about what it is, yep, but I, first of all, couldn't find anything more up to date. Mm -hmm. The soil went in a year after the statement right. was there. I, I couldn't find any information to try to research that further and find out what's going on and, right. and where you come from. So um, that's why I still And some of these properties, that soil may stay on there for three or four years before they decide to move it because they, they'll just, if they move it around on their own property, they don't have to hire trucks and stuff like that. Once they finally get up to enough spot where they need things moved, that's where we come in and we'll find a, a farm like Adams where it can go to and Everything's cool that way. So the certification stays with that allotment of soil yes, yeah. until it's moved elsewhere. Right. And that comes from that property. We'll, we won't accept any trucks from any other property to come to that because it has to go from property A where we have the paperwork to Adam's property. That's the only two places it's going to go. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I have one question, though. Okay. On your paperwork, you ask 
what fill is. Can I have a definition of what you call fill? We're not in a position to answer questions right now. From oh, okay. And, no and I apologize, but certainly there's definitions in our bylaw, mm -hmm. and that should be sourced through staff. Uh, it could have been sourced before this meeting, and somebody may ask that question as we go forward. But at this point in time, this is your chance to make right. a position for your client. I'm just saying that it's, it's not Phil. I've grown up on a farm my entire life. I still farm, and I work for another farmer as well when I can. I wouldn't put any dirt, okay, I wouldn't move any dirt to somebody else's farm that I wouldn't personally put on my own. Mm -hmm. Just because my idea of Phil would be clay, things with rocks, sticks, and that kind of stuff in it. Because it's never going to grow. So I think the definition of fill in there doesn't quite contain what we'll take, I'm to. giving you some liberty here in okay. that we're not supposed to be taking questions know, from you. Just, the definition is in the bylaw, and if it isn't substantial <coughs> enough to define it, maybe someone around this horseshoe will ask that question, or at an appropriate time, okay. we may look at that as a result. But I know that that bylaw was vetted in 2016, and it had all kinds of opportunity from every sector of this municipality to have input from everyone. Right. So okay. at this point in time, I'm going to... Just hold you there. Okay, I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm going to say one more thing. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of liberty, but in a minute I may ask you to just That's wait fine. for the next question. All right, I'll just wait. No, I'm giving you an opportunity. If you've got a small comment, make it now. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait just to make sure I get it right. Well, while you, Councilor Ganan, if um, I may, I, while you're still there, could we have an address for Brooklyn Cleanfield, please? Oh. Uh, Don't run away. Okay. <laughs> I have to say my name. Yes. yes. And your address. And my address. Amy Staniak, and it's 1350 Lime Ridge Road East in Hamilton. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Councilor Ganan, you've relinquished the floor, and I'm going to I'm going to acknowledge Councilor Bell. I apologize for that little bit of a shuffle, Councilor Bell, but the floor is yours. <clears throat> My questions, some of them are around the soil and the soil testing, so I don't know if you want to come back up. Pardon? I got some questions about your soil and the testing of it. So what you're proposing, what is on there now, and what you're proposing to bring in another thousand roads mm -hmm. is clean soil yes. fill. Yes. Okay, it's not topsoil. Well, in my personal opinion, some of the soil that we're bringing in is better than the stuff that's on the farm. Okay, but and just to stop you there, your soil testing says it is not topsoil. So you want to uh, okay you know, against him or no? I'm not against him. I just when the guys that are doing the work at the other end of the, like, at the production end, we'll call it, mm -hmm. when they do a soil test, it doesn't have to say any kind of sample. It doesn't have to say whether it's clay or topsoil or anything. They don't have to put, all they're looking for is that it doesn't have any heavy metals, uh, crazy amounts of salt or any other minerals like that, or, so, what they look for is just something that says that it's not dirty or contaminated soil. And, and they rightly said that. They simply said that it's not topsoil. Question at hand is, if this was topsoil, you wouldn't be here tonight. It is topsoil. Because, because, because well, you're disputing, it just, no, you're disputing it doesn't what order. you have. I don't do that too often. Oh, I let everybody speak, but I'm not going to have any arguments here. Uh, You've been asked a question as to whether it was topsoil. You said it wasn't. Now you say you are. I'm going to ask Mr. Councillor Bell to put his question forward again. Okay. And you can answer his question, but please, let's not have an argument. Okay. So I'll simply put, is it topsoil or is it clean fill? Think about it before you answer. I would say that it's clean fill and topsoil mix. Okay. And I'm not I'm not trying to be That's your answer, okay? Okay. So the next one then 
you talk about your heavy metals and different things, and I see in your report that it talks about high levels of zinc. And it also says the recommendation is that uh, from the affected areas should uh, be disposed of at a registered waste facility, either a waste or possibly a cap in material. So that zinc was have, in the it was inside the parameters on the uh, paperwork that we had. Yeah. So I'm just are you going to dispose of that? It says right in the report that was written. Obviously, you haven't read the report. Which report is that? That's from your topsoil. Testing pit study. It's just in Burns from Walters. These are the people who did your soil testing. And they have all their numbers down here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remind so. everyone here that this is Adam Knuth's application. This is a chance for the proponent and or his team of, ex of, of experts to come forward. If you wish, how you wish to come forward is completely in your hands, so anyone here to support the application can be at the microphone. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to make the presentation. Our council, our committee are going to continue to ask questions until all their questions are resolved. This isn't a grilling. This is merely to get okay. clarification. So I see people with hands up in the audience. Yep. I assume that I'm, getting, I'm looking at Mr. Knuth and saying, if you want more people at this podium, it's up to you, but I'm going to have to look at someone to be the leader of your presentation. Just don't make it where we're going from one to the other because I'll look for concise answers and then I'll turn it back. Each answer, we're not going to again get argumentative. Thank you. Okay, so as for your, your name. And Sorry. We know your name is Amy, Amy Standek, and you're from? Brooklyn Cleanfill. And your position with that company is? I'm an owner. I'm sorry? Owner. Louder. It's going to have to go with the Owner. Tape. Better. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> it's got to be on the tape. It goes on tape. I apologize. It's okay. The repeats aren't worth listening to if you can't hear them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councillor Bell, you, you asked the question. Yep. And so, Ms. Standek, if you would. Do I have that right, Standek? Staniak. Staniak. Okay. Yep. Go for it. That's uh <laughs> Okay, so as for um, the high levels of zinc in the soil, um, the property where the soil was coming from, um, there was different piles on the property. The dirt that had the higher levels of zinc was pushed to the side, and the rest was put in um, a stockpile to be removed off of the property. So the stuff with the, the higher levels of zinc was pushed aside and that was to be disposed of. So the stuff that went to Adam's property was the other pile. It had no higher levels of zinc. It was completely separated from where the company that test, had the testing done. It was just a completely separate pile. It had nothing to do with the dirt that went to Adam's property. Councillor Bell, you still have the floor. I'm, yep. I'm going to let you go with your questions. I'm reading what's happening here. So you said they were separated. Did they dispose of that soil in the right they did. fashion? Yep. Okay. And was a random sampling done on Adam's property to make sure none of it made its way out to that property? We did not have any sampling. Um, well, actually, we did have sampling done on that dirt. Um, and everything checked out where basically the companies that do the testing on the dirt, they have every, um, like you've got calcium, you have magnesium, you have mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So they, once the levels, they have a certain level and anything above that is considered too high or a contamination. So basically they did the um, testing on the soil that went onto Adam's property to make sure that all the levels didn't exceed what it should be. Okay. And do you have paperwork for that? We do. Okay, so maybe you can, through you, Madam Chair, maybe get that forwarded to the clerk so we can... I'm not sure if it's not already been submitted. Has it been submitted to anyone here? hasn't been submitted, but we do have paperwork on the samples. So, Councillor Bell's asking if it will be submitted, you have no objection to it being submitted? 
Absolutely. Totally fine. <clears throat> so the other thousand loads that you're looking for now is coming from the same property? Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's that's it for the soil for now. Just want to talk about the roads and things Move like on, that. Move on. You've so got the floor, Councillor Bell. I don't know who Adam wants to address it now. I don't think. Oh. I don't think Amy's doing the roads. <laughs> Stay close. <laughs> so, Adam, you've addressed a lot of the problems with drainage. You've talked about the roads. Uh, my concern now is that I guess need you to sit with our building department, specifically Mr. Trouble, and I'd like to see some kind of a site plan agreement put together. It's easy to stand here and say, yes, I'm going to look after the roads, yes, I'm going to look after the drainage. Okay. I'd like to see something put into writing as an agreement that all these things you did say will come to be when the time comes and and I I do appreciate you being forward and straight up with it but being what it is we need to keep the agreement brought forward and I, I appreciate the fact that you're you're bringing the 5,000 for what's been damaged now and putting the second 5,000 down as a retainer for any future damage that could happen uh, one of the other things I look at is I realize it's out in the concession, but is keeping the roads clean during this process. Any clots and mud or stuff like that, because people, residents, still have to use that road, and they don't want to be getting caught up in mud, especially when you get rainy weather, because we know what the roads are like when it rains. Mm -hmm. So if you're okay with that, I'm, I'm fine with what you're proposing and uh, what you're doing. I, I really don't have a major issue with it, but I do have quite an issue with the soil sampling. You really want to see that documentation because that's the whole point of a site alteration. We don't want contaminated soil in our community. So really need to see that documentation and make sure that it's good documentation and it's worthy. So if you're okay with that kind of an arrangement and, and working with Mr. Treble, I'll be fine. So there is documentation that I have given Mr. Treble and actually uh, Mr. Rainer over here too. There is actually this, the exact documentation that is read mm -hmm. off for you guys. I have presented to Brian Treble and to Mike Rainer yep. about what my future plans are, yep. and um, it is in writing. Mm -hmm. As for signature, obviously I haven't signed it because well, it was just a recommendation right now. So, um, as for the roads, like I said, I I can all I can say is the best I can to keep the roads in the condition that they are. Yep. I will say that I'm at a council meeting now. I'm not going to argue with anyone. I'm not too impressed with concession two, the way that it's been kept. Out of the 23 years that I've lived there, the roads have not been kept up to the condition that I would say are fit for the road. I'm not going to sit here and argue about what damages I did or didn't do, but I will say the road, now that I'm on record, is in dire need to be serviced a little bit better than okay. it is. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm going to stop you there because no this is not a place for. I know. I'm just August 22nd, October 22nd. You know, that's the that's the election the campaign speech. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so perfect. I guess um, I'll be here. <laughs> so all I'm asking is basically, Mr. Trouble, put together an agreement and look at the condition of the road. Maybe you guys can do it together. <coughs> uh, something similar to what we did with the turbines. Look at the condition, what it's in now, and review it later. Um, and put together an agreement to make sure that the site alteration doesn't affect the drainage for your neighbors or anybody else. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very happy that you did talk to Mr. Marley, and everything is good yeah. there. And like I said, uh, I've been in coordination uh, yeah. with Brian Treble and yeah. will be in the future in full cooperation but of everything. So, Really, again, going back to the metals and the, set, and then the testing of the soil. Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure we get that documentation. <clears throat> right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bilsma. Thank you very much. And while you're there, and through you, uh, Madam Chair, to uh, Mr. Knuth. Uh, so let me uh, pre preface this by saying um, that your application comes at a time when we've we've dealt with this. This is kind of a current uh, hot button issue. Uh, we felt that our municipality was becoming a bit of a dump site, <laughs> and there were some out of control sites where they were making mountains. I, th I think that uh, you've satisfied me 
by stating um, that this is uh, you have a plan and a vision, and short, it's short-term to get it into a position, and then the truckloads will cease because you've achieved what you want to achieve. Uh, so, but I will ask, this is just a limited time um, uh, modification to your property, and it's not going to be ongoing every um, uh, in, in order to make a, a mountain, for example. It's just to do the improvement to the soil. Is that correct? Um, I do like skiing, so can I build a mountain? or? <laughs> Like, no, no, it's yeah. there's no mountain going there. It will be a limited time, and I so, have no yeah. intentions of doing what everyone obviously knows happened in Grimsby. So yeah. that's not my intentions by any means. So. Okay, thank you very much. I I, uh, I appreciate it. I uh, at this point uh, have no further questions. Ms. Mayor Joyner, I just have one, Adam. <clears throat> From the memo from, from Jennifer Bernard to Brent Julian on July 3rd, and it talks about the site alteration permit application. And the final line says, if council approves the site alteration per permit, public works request to select the route that trucks would travel to the site in an effort to minimize further damage to the township's roads. You don't have any problem with that, right? Nope. And I've been in contact with Brian, and I believe Brent, yes. I don't know the last name, Brent was the... Julian. Julie, there you go. Is the public works guy yeah. so I have been in contact with him and whatever needs to be done to make sure that it the projects finished is I'm in coordination with so okay good thank you councillor Rayner thank I you, object <laughs> uh, you're still on the chopping block it's a lectern or a podium but whatever you want to call it yeah I can say chopping block but all right. <clears throat> but it's really not uh, anyways, um, I would like members of committee to know that uh, I did go on site last week. Uh, I've had a number of calls from Adam with regards to coming and viewing the property. Um, I went and looked at it. Uh, the soil that's there, uh, to me, uh, it is growing uh, weeds on it, so it will support vegetation. It's not as clean as what I would put on my land. Uh, there's, there's a lot of rock in it, but two inches <coughs> or less. It doesn't affect the growing ability. It doesn't have concrete or asphalt in it. Uh, but that the point is that he is filling in some very swampy area located to the north of his barns <coughs> and uh, at which point he's going to top dress it with actual topsoil. Uh, I was there also with this, uh, the farmer that looks after the, the property and he also has an interest as does Adam to make sure that this is done properly so that not only are we eliminating <coughs> a bad area with swamp and as everybody knows what the problems we have with mosquitoes now with West Nile and uh, Lyme disease and everything else, the more swamps you fill in, the better it is, and Kester is renowned for that. So he's making a very positive effort in that regards to eliminate a, a very bad situation because those swamps pieces are quite large. Uh, my question to you, Adam, is when we looked at this, we, we felt that there was enough what you call clean soil, which is what we're calling the subsoil right now. Um, are you still of that feeling uh, through you, Madam Chair? that uh, we will not be bringing in any more of the soil that you've got there, but we'll only be bringing topsoil in to dress what you've got? Again, we come back to the definition of topsoil. I'm not a soil expert. I'm going to bring in the cleanest soil that I can to dress what's there. And we have discussed, obviously, that the, the grade of the land is a little high there, and we're going to slope that off. And I do want to bring in the best soil that I can. I'm not going to go on the record that it's topsoil, because obviously there's an issue with if it's topsoil or not. I'm going to bring in the best dirt that I can bring in. If I, if I had to pay for topsoil, I, I can't guarantee that, yes, I would be bringing in topsoil of the <coughs> best quality. All right, through you, Madam Chair. Um, you, have two, you have two piles there. You have a pile that's on the field right now working towards filling in the swamp. That was what I consider to be um, subgrade soil. Uh, it will support vegetation, but there's, there's a lot of rock in it. Uh, but you also have another pile that you indicated was your top dressing pile or topsoil pile yes. that you plan on putting on top. And you basically felt uh, at the time that I was there that you agreed that there was enough of the soil that had the rock in it to level off the, pretty well the swamping area. And the pile that you had brought in that you're top dressing this with um, would be what you're going to use on that. And you're going to bring more of the same in to finish the job. Is that basically how it still stands? Yes. The soil that was in that pile is the soil that I intend to bring in to further top dress what's there, so. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, um, Adam has gone out of his way, um, to me at least. I can't um, let you go forward with that, Councillor. You need to be very careful. You can say that when we get to the report. All right, fine. At this point, at least, I would, I would like to say that I'm comfortable with what I see. Uh, the direction is to eliminate a swamp area. 
and the objective is to do it with the purpose of increasing the agricultural ability of the property to which he owns. Uh, it's totally different than we've had in the past where we've had a lot of experience with people who are just building mountains and, uh, and creating a lot of other drainage concerns. Mr. Morley clearly stated that <coughs> he doesn't have a problem and Adam uh, has agreed, and I've got it in writing here, that, that he will work with the neighbors to make sure that whatever he's doing will not create a drainage problem to the neighbors. So I think he's done due diligence, and uh, from there, uh, we'll see what the committee has to say. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm not going to grill you, but I am going to ask you some questions. No, right. and I'm not going to take this lightly, because yep. we put in a bylaw that required people to take action, and bylaws are put in place to stop the building of berms and to stop various things and to have people make, take into account proper experts. So my question is, do you have an engineer working with you that has done a plan for a site plan? Because Councillor Bell expects that there will be a site plan agreement coming out of tonight or out of a, a recommendation meeting. Is there an engineer and has there been any environmental expertise given that identifies that no species at risk will be eliminated, no wetlands that are appropriate for other species? And I'm making this pretty verbose because I want to know if you've got an environmental person and or engineer that's worked to create the slope, the compaction, and all of the work that you're doing with uh, all of the dirt that you've brought in. At this time, I can't answer that. I no, Do you or don't you? It's very simple. Do you have an engineer working with you? No, I do not have an engineer working with you. Do you me. have an environmental specialist giving you input on the fill that you are doing to the lands that you are doing it on? That I'm aware of, no. Okay. Are you accepting, are you accepting, is there a fee for dumping on your property? No, there is not. I've been very, very clear with Brian and with Mike that there well, has been no fee. Well, you're now fee. before council and this is the one that I'm has to make I'm being very it. clear with the council that there is no fee that I've been accepting for the fill that has been coming in. Is there a reg, is there a process of compaction? Because, you know, when you put in fill, you usually compact it. So is there compaction equipment on your site to make sure that you aren't, in fact, layering it without some sort of consideration for the underlying soil. And I don't care whether you've got gumbo or soup or whatever you've got. I just want to know that you're following a process. <clears throat> can I call my contractor to answer you that? You can call anyone you want. There you go. <laughs> Questions that I don't exactly have answers for. I'm not uh, the one uh, Listen, doing... it's not about you. It's well, about just, how just... we're going to create a precedent that will be yep. used by everyone, including me, tomorrow. Yep. Joe Stanek? Yes, to answer. I'm not sure what the yes was. The answer to your question, yes, there will be. We stopped immediately as soon as any question came to hand. We stopped. We're keeping the peace. We have not gone forth. You've got 10,000 cubic meters of soil, but to date there's been no compaction. No, because it stopped half, halfway through. The, the, the date that came in said stop, we stopped. So nothing has gone on or off, no machine have been running, nothing. Okay. So right now Mother Nature has rained on it. That's the only comp that's the only thing that's been there right now. Okay, because all of those berms had bulldozers on it and they were running machines that not the best of equipment, but I'm just asking whether you had done anything. No. No. Okay. Don't go away. My questions are merely that of what it was that we should be asking and taking into consideration from anyone that goes on to their property to do this. As to the roads, and, and uh, I may slip back and forth, please forgive me, but as to the roads, <clears throat> the $5,000 deposit and the concern that everyone is having, $5,000 does not provide a lot of road. Adam, you've indicated that the roads aren't up to your standards. But we haven't got anyone that is going to evaluate the before and after. And when the wind turbines brought trucks down our roads, we had a before and after picture, and there were a lot of people who were very, very concerned. And that company repaired the roads to the state it was before it happened. So my question is, you stand before me as two, two people. You stand before me as a taxpayer that's not happy about the, about the quality of the roads that, that he lives on for the past years, but you also stand before me as a contractor who wants and has done damage on the shoulders by trucks overpassing. 
So I have to look to our staff and say, at the appropriate time, Mr. Treble, in a site alteration plan, do we have a before and after sighting of what that road looked like with 10,000 cubic, before the 10,000 cubic meters that have arrived plus the 10,000 more to come? Or 5,000, I'm sorry, that's changed. Through you, Madam Chair, since the uh, works commenced without our knowledge, we do not have before pictures, <coughs> excuse me, of the road um, from, let's say, the end of April or the end of May. I'm, I think it was in May that the, the truck started hauling in. Um, obviously, since then, staff have been out and staff have a pretty good knowledge of what the roads are like today. Um, so on a going forward basis, we'll be in good shape. But for that first amount of uh, fill that came in, we do not have pictures of before uh, that event occurred. Thank you. So if there is an additional compensation that we'll be looking for to remedy the situation that's measured in some way that our staff come up with that will be put into a site plan agreement, are you understanding that there could be a cost beyond the $5,000? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> As, as to coming forward, I commend you for coming forward and taking whatever it is we're doing. And I'm so sure that you've noticed that we're not trying to bite your head off unnaturally. But I'm looking at the future and who will come to be at that podium after you. What triggered you coming forward to this podium to talk about legitimizing your import of fill? It's probably Curie. Yeah, I'd say, that, I'd say that's me. <laughs> uh, legitimizing? Um, Ultimately, because I am aware of the history that's been done on Phil, and obviously not the West Lincoln Township, but in Grimsby, and I am aware of where it is, and those people are obviously pocketing money and getting money for what they're doing. I'm not pocketing the money. I'm strictly, like I've said from the beginning, and I've reiterated to Brian Treble and to Mike, I'm doing it strictly for agricultural purposes. I have no intentions of lining my pocket, <coughs> so that's why I'm at this podium. I hate to try to sell myself. So nothing, but nothing. There was no bylaw infraction, but you also weren't aware of our bylaw. So you just proceeded forward with the. I was unaware. Yes, you're absolutely right. I was unaware. Okay. Perhaps maybe I should have informed myself more, but I was unaware. I'm going to ask you whether or not who could answer the question about whether or not it's topsoil. It isn't a trick question. I just need it clarified because I've heard that it's a mix. So I need somebody, and you say you've got soil people who have looked at this, analyzed it. There's some with zinc, so there could have been some cross-contamination. I'll be very clear of where I'm coming. I just want to know what it is the bulk of the materials coming in actually consists of from you to us. Amy Stanyak, it is clean fill. Clean fill. Clean fill, but not topsoil. Correct. The source of this material is from Hamilton. Mm -hmm. What is the source of the material? Was it basements? Is it grading below the topsoil? Because topsoil, it's not. I've just heard. It was out of a cornfield. It was a field. It came out of a field, basically. Was it stripped prior to your removal? So the topsoil has been stripped off, and this is the underlying soil as a construction site took place. No? Help me here. No. When the field starts, it was stripped. So there was corn stalk, everything still in it. They scraped the top of the field off to make a parking spot for the additional building. So in other words, the topsoil is usually stripped off and then... Yes. And so the topsoil was stripped off. I just want to be understanding this completely. I'm trying to paint a picture in my head too. Yeah. Too. Usually they strip topsoil, put it over in a separate pile, and then they go to the underlying Correct. soils. Correct. And that's what this was. This was a topsoil berm. But when they, after the fact, we had it retested. So we have to know sure, for sure, that this is what it was. So I'm confused now. Is it topsoil or is it the underlying soil below the topsoil? It's the top half of the soil. There was several, there was samples of one, two, and three. We don't have to take one, two, and three. We only took the one sample of the paperwork. Before when it came to the attention, we were asked to bring all our paperwork forth. We did. We brought everything there. So in that paperwork it said one, two, and three. We have a choice to say yes or no to what we take. I bring a property owner there. They see it too before this even starts. 
So I'm going to ask you one more time. Is this topsoil? Because I've heard it is, it isn't, it's got rocks, it's not. <clears throat> How would we assure ourselves? There's some paperwork somewhere floating around, and all I want, is it topsoil or not? With, with I've heard. It's not. <laughs> the definition that you have of topsoil, that's not what it is. Okay. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Because otherwise, we're wasting a whole bunch of time here. Because if it's topsoil, go do it. Exactly. And, and you've said it's not, so let's not mince, mince words. I'm not trying to be aggressive. I'm just trying to understand. So if it's not topsoil, and that's the clean answer, yep. then Adam has, has, has a right to be concerned that he is in violation of our bylaw and has, he should be here. And you, as his suppliers, <laughs> should be there as well. If we, in a site alteration agreement, ask for an engineered engineers to study the site to ensure the stability of anything you're doing is part of the settlement, will you comply with that? Yes. If this is a technical report, which it is tonight, and it will not be a recommendation report until all the answers for all these questions are remedied, and it comes back further, are you willing to continue to cease your operations until the completion of all of the work required? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I have a lot more questions, but those are the questions I think are pertinent to us understanding in a public meeting what it is that's been happening on Adams land. And if that's if that seems unjust, I I really truly uh, I'm I'm sorry for what you're feeling, but for future con conditions that will have others applying to bring in thousands of loads of soil that are not topsoil, I don't want to be sitting here, or maybe we won't be, it'll be next term, <clears throat> but I don't want those people to feel that we set a precedent with you. Right. That's my biggest concern, not what you're doing, not when you came forward. It's merely a process, and that's what I have to go by. So thank you for the answers to those questions. I believe that we have exhausted the questions, otherwise it wouldn't have come to me for questions, but if I've sparked or triggered other people for additional ones, don't go away. Okay, we are going to have an opportunity to talk about the report and the fact it's coming again back as a recommendation report at a future committee. But, Councillor Rayner, did you have a question? Seems like a double mic. Um, <clears throat> anyways, with regards to you said you scraped it off the cornfield. But when I went to the site, the dirt contained a lot of small rocks. I <coughs> don't quite understand that. What did you do? There, there like was. You were spreading it? Yes. On the property, we had a lot of soft spots on Adam's property. We, we filled it in with extra gravel. So what we had from his parking lot Fourth, we scraped into the middle of the field to lose the soft. So that's what I've seen. Yes. It wasn't that's the rock coming the, from the site. Yeah, no. There was the yard debris fine. in it, but that was pulled out. So it's only on the surface there that I'm seeing. Correct. Yeah, that's fine. I've got my answer. Thank you very much. Seeing no other members of the committee wishing to speak at this time, that doesn't mean that it's over when the report comes forward. Just to advise you, there, this report will be dealt with again. It may be just to refer it back to staff for a recommendation report, but just so that you know. So thank you very much for the answers to the questions posed by committee. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Please be advised that this is a technical report only that is being considered by committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning and or council meeting. There is an attendance sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors which we ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's meeting that you place a check mark in the column mark marked Knuth if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. It is suggested that it, you include your email address with your mailing address and your phone number on the attendance sign-in sheet. 
If there is someone who, that is interested in observing council or committee discussions about a particular issue, it is suggested that you watch the township's websites for posting of agendas to review items that will be discussed at a committee and or council meeting. The agendas for meetings are posted on the township website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the website for the public to view. This public meeting with respect to the site alteration permit from Mr. Adam Knuth for the property known as 8951 Concession Road Kester, to Caster Center is concluded at the hour of 7.53. <clears throat> Thank you. Our last public meeting is, assault, is the purpose of this meeting is to give opportunity for the public and members of council to provide comment and or ask questions regarding the importing of fill on lands owned by Mr. Velko Gavrick on lands known as 8244 Silver Street, also known as Regional Road 65, Caster Center, and approval of a site alteration permit. This is to advise that notice of this public meeting, which was dated July 6, 2018, was circulated by individual notice to properties within 120 meters of the subject lands. <clears throat> Mr. Treble, please, would you explain the purpose and reason for this public meeting? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this meeting is very similar to the meeting we just went through, um, <clears throat> except, of course, the property is different and the volumes are slightly different. The, this property is at 8244 Silver Street and is um, a farm parcel where Mr. Gavrick is the owner of the lands, um, but rents the lands out to an area farmer for farming purposes. The understanding that, that staff have is that, uh, once again, there's low spots on the farm, and the desire is to um, attempt to level the farmland to make it easier for um, farming, harvesting, and production. And so uh, another <coughs> thousand cubic meters Sorry, another 10,000 cubic meters of soil is proposed to be imported. 1,000 loads is proposed to be brought on to the site in addition to the 50 to 60 loads that are there now. So the volume on site now is substantially less than what is in Adams at present, but the, uh, the amount coming is very similar to the proposal of Mr. Knuth. <clears throat> there is, Madam Chair, um, consultation that has occurred with the conservation authority in this particular instance in that um, the property if you look at the the screen the property identified as 8288 so immediately to the west has a provincially significant wetland on site the neighbor that owns 8288 has expressed concerns about what the impact will be to the wetland and uh, the conservation <coughs> authority has taken a look at the proposal and a look at the lands adjacent and has recommended a two-meter setback, which um, it's my understanding that Mr. Gavrick is proposing to comply with. So, Madam Chair, the proposal is to actually um, put the 1,000 loads or 10,000 cubic meters of soil over the majority of the farmland. It's not localized to the area immediately behind the buildings or anything, as I understand it, although that's where the start of the work did occur was towards the road end. Uh, at that point, Madam Chair, I'll turn it back to you, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll hear from Mr. Gavrick with uh, further information. Okay. Thank you very much. Members of the public present wishing to speak to this particular application. Oh, wait a minute. I missed the property. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <clears throat> Mr. Gavrick, as the owner, uh, are you prepared to speak to this, or do you have an, any number of people you wish to bring forward to... Post your position. Elko Gavrick. Um, Hi. Uh, what Adam says, we're all in the same boat kind of thing. I do um, have some samples I did take from since we had a full stop cease on the property. I did samples of the soil, but I haven't handed in to Brian Trouble due to the fact of my work. Um, I will handed in today. I have them in my hand. More than welcome to have it now. Just for clarity, Mr. Gavrick, I, I apologize, but are, is the soil you're receiving the same, the same from the same I, place, yes. same stuff? Yep. Exactly. Yep. I see. Okay. So It was like Ab and I are friends, so we, that's how we got to the same soil. 
Okay. So I would I suggest that anything you're submitting tonight would go through the clerk's office and she'll distribute it to the appropriate yes, staff. Yes, fine. <clears throat> okay, so. I do have soil samples of it from that. So if you could, this is your chance. You want to tell us what you're doing or any further description to what it was that uh, <coughs> um, Brian has, has put forward as to what you're doing. It, this is your chance. As Mr. Treble did say, I'm here just to help my land out. I'm, I've lived here in this West Lincoln community for a very long time, and I'm not here to screw it up. I love the town, and it's just the way it is. I don't want to screw my property up. I've talked to my farmer that's doing everything the land. He loves the soil for what he wants to do for his crops, and he wants soil to be brought to his area to be the same, to do the same thing that we are trying to accomplish, just to fix our lands to better it. I'm not here to destroy it. Don't want to destroy it. <laughs> okay. And if that's your presentation, I'm happy to have received it. And uh, the clerk will take your anything you want to submit at, at the appropriate time. Chuan Shime is our clerk, and she'll take those papers and make copies, as I said. If you wish to say anything else, please feel free. Elsewise, we'll go to the public and then opportunity for you to answer any questions directly. Or I imagine the same team that is uh, supporting Mr. Oh, yeah. <coughs> that both of you have uh, will be to answering any questions. Okay. I'll wait here. <laughs> Thank you. We, we give you a chair if you paid premium rates. But no. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any members of the public wishing to speak to this particular application at this time? Please come forward, state your name and address, and we'd be happy to hear your comments. Hello. <clears throat> David McMahon. Um, um, one of the owners of 8288 Silver Street. And it is, um, it's class three wetlands. It's, uh, they say, provincially significant wetlands. <clears throat> and my concern, I guess, is, uh, is a drainage issue. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not aware of the soil quality. I, I, you know, we're hoping it's all on the, I guess you guys are discussing it. I hope it's all good. <clears throat> um, I understand that the Conservation Authority has, um, they have, something that in place that they want him to do some sort of a silt barrier and a, a buffer a two meter buffer again that's all right uh and again um it is wetlands uh, and i'm not afraid to take a little bit more water which is what will probably happen uh, it is wetlands but i my only concern is um in periods that aren't the what do they call it like the hyper period you say well i don't know march april uh, november when it really pours it it, it there It takes a lot of the water. My land is sloped to it, and his, because again, we share a border. Um, I thought my only concern is that it's uh, it's uh, it floods the land uh, in such a way that it uh, you know it takes away from my enjoyment it, it, when it becomes a bit squishier or whatever in the spring or the uh, whatever. I, I'm not concerned about that. I'm okay. I've spoken to the gentleman. Uh, if he'd like to go forward, I understand he has the right to do that. He wants to improve his uh, agricultural. Uh, potential and uh, being right beside wetland of course he does have some uh, probably low areas so I'm okay with as long as you guys are all right with the soil and uh, any provision that <coughs> is um, taken to um, mitigate any really bad flooding I'm okay with uh, so that's really I'm that's I just wanted to put on record I think my wife sent an email stating the same fact that uh, we're just concerned about um, excess water really uh, that is the, the thing but um, that's about it thank you thank you very much mr. McMahon other members of the public wishing to address this item Seeing none, I'm going to confine it to table and ask if members of committee have any questions pertaining to this particular application. I saw Councillor Bell first and then Councillor Ganan. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, they're very similar, both properties. I guess the, the, the thing we're looking at is that, again, going to request that the homeowner works with Mr. Treble 
sits down to get a site plan, bring it forward. <clears throat> you know, right now there's been no sketch provided. Soil testing, it hasn't been submitted. Uh, is it the samples you're going to submit? Was the testing done at the same time, same dirt? Or has it been done at different times? You know, I need a truck route. <clears throat> uh, Public Works is asking to have a truck route put out there. What about road repairs, drainage? It all needs to be addressed. So I think the individual needs to sit with Mr. Treble and bring a site plan together that's going to work for everybody and if all is in agreement, bring it back and we can move forward with it. So I'm not going <coughs> to ask all them questions. We just, <laughs> we just went through it with Adam. So. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Councillor Ganan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also have some questions, Falco. That's okay. Uh, mostly, I'm, I'm looking at the timeline. I have in front of me um, the information from the NPCA, from the Conservation Authority. And again, it's placement under the subject when they send back their response to you, which is copied in our in our uh, agenda. They talk about topsoil again. And so um, I'm wondering if 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 that's still an issue. Obviously, we've decided, as of Adams, that it's no longer called topsoil. I wonder if that makes any difference to the NPCA at all, and whether you have had any discussion with them about what actually is coming in I the have, property. Uh, for them, I have talked to them about all this, and Brian Treble was in with the meeting and stuff. I have the sample that we had. I sent that towards them, so they had their engineers or everybody mm -hmm. to read. And I do have uh, a letter back from conservation of the uh, pit, uh, test pit study that they did that they have uh, no issues and in his words were they have no issues with the topsoil being provided based on this report. Um, so further to that, I, and I'm glad that you went to the trouble of getting the samples and so on because I had also without knowing that I had questions about about the fact, again, that the documentation, it was the timeline that I was looking at. So the documentation was, was May of 2017. The chain of custody documents that were provided were also a year old. And then, you know, your soil was coming in. So I appreciate that you stopped and that you sent your application in and that you've been in contact with the MPCA. The one question I have about that is when you made your application, which we don't have an example of, was that application based on the 600 cubic meters of soil that you had already brought in? Or was it based <coughs> on what you hope to bring in going forward? My application was hope, like for my application for today is hopefully what I can forward to bring in. I appreciate without. that that's what you're applying for yeah. here. I'm yeah. wondering what you told the NPCA. What volume? I told them exactly what was They know that, that you're know anticipating yeah. another huge number because I know that as I read through that it talked about the scope. If there's any if they want to be informed if there's any change in the scope or nature of the product of, of the project. Yes. So if if in your original presentation you were just talking to them about the 600 cubic meters that have already come in, that's a very different scope than what you're predicting, well, what, what, what you're hoping to bring my in predict the When I was talking to the conservation, it was the prediction of the full amount of soil that coming in previously. That Plus they, the 600 that you already have. Yeah, that was all so going to be joined into one before I got the full stop seas of work. Okay. So I, had, I didn't get to that point, full point, and when I talked to conservation, my limit that I was at with conservation because okay. of my stop seas to work. I, yeah, yeah, and that's where the timeline, that's where I yeah. had trouble with the timeline my, because I found all the dates of all these different things and so in May you, you stopped because, you know, somebody said to you, hey, you can't have that much. But the application to the NPCA was June 4th, so you'd already stopped. As of June 5th, that's when I talked to conservation. Okay, and then on June 7th, I see that they gave you a response. But, but that was my question again. Was that response based on the 600 that you'd already put in or the 10,000, which is, to me, changing the scope considerably? It's the 10,000. It was on the 10,000. Okay. 10, so then I guess the next question <coughs> would be through, you know, through you, Madam Chair, to, to Mr. Treble, and that is the McMahons had asked for somebody from the NPCA to actually come and look at the wetlands and, and talk to them and give them an explanation of how it was not going to, that the two-meter buffer would be enough. So, so I'm not... I'm not sure how we go about trying to help the McMahons get their satisfaction in terms of 
of the uh, MPCA actually appreciating what the total number of, of cubic meters of soil coming in would be and whether the difference between the 600 or the 10,000 would make any difference to the impact on the wetlands. I can appreciate what you're trying to do with your land. I'm just also thinking about the wetland uh, aspect. Both, before Brian answers, both the uh, wetlands. <laughs> My property, yes, it is beside his. Mm -hmm. But when I talked to conservation, he gave me um, a better map than what I was proposed from West Lincoln. Um, I have a, they call it a buffer where my property is. Mm -hmm. It's a buffer where it's beyond that point where they want me to put the soot uh, screening for mm -hmm. my, put my dirt down. So I'm like a buffer towards the wetlands. So I'm not really, I'm not wetlands at all. I'm just a buffer of a, so many meters of what they have classified as so many meters of being a buffer around them. Okay. Could you possibly so I, uh, put that drawing back up so that Pardon me, Mr. Gavrick is speaking to it. We might as well have the picture up. I don't know if you have. We did have the picture. The, the wetlands. Yeah, I think I think we have that one. And Sorry, CCA I just thought it would give there. more clarity to what you're trying to say. Should be next, I would think. Next one. Is it the next page? No, no, it's not. Because I was okay. got this one. I guess we don't have it. We don't have it. So, mm -hmm. it's a, if you could just enlarge that particular page, it does show the wetlands up at the cor uh, the uh, ponding, etc. I guess that's the best we can do. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Gannon. I was trying to give you some. Well, thank you. And I and perhaps I'm not explaining myself well. I'm not. <coughs> I'm not worried about the fact that there could be wetland that you are causing a problem to <coughs> Velco on your property. Yeah. I'm just trying to be cognizant of the fact that that the very next property with no imaginary line there, you yeah. know, just has a very significant wetland. And and obviously, in my mind, um, a thousand truckloads of soil additionally added to that property <coughs> is going to somehow change the drainage patterns. And so I'm just wondering whether we can somehow through the municipality try to get some, some something that reassures the McMahons <laughs> that this, this property that they've been stewards of and, and taking care of the wetlands that are on their property is not going to be um, damaged in some way. Is that fair? I, that's, my, that's my point. Councillor Ganan, I think that your point, <clears throat> when we get to the report, may be addressed by a request to have that exact kind of thing done, not just a sketch, but a professional sketch and an, an engineering study and drawings for drainage, etc. could be part of the site plan application that, that the site Pardon me, application for this kind of volumes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> I do have one more thing, like due to the fact that about the drainage that you were kind of just going. Mr. McMahon knows that in my property, goes around the whole property, I do have a deep ditch that's going between our <coughs> properties, and it can hold, consume a lot of water, and which will go around towards my property, which he can vouch for because we have discussed this about the water drainage and everything else. I do have a ditch that goes around <coughs> and it just drains there, which can handle a lot of excess water. Thank you. Madam Chair, just as well for the record, uh, yes. staff will work with the Conservation Authority to seek some clarity with respect to the concern and make it make sure that the Conservation Authority was clear on the volumes of fill that were, were being imported. I was communicating with uh, <coughs> Mr. McKenzie from the Conservation Authority and, uh, and Velco is right, uh, we did speak to them jointly as well. Um, my focus, the initial time in, in communicating with the Conservation Authority was about the issue of whether it was clean fill versus topsoil and that distinction. And uh, the answer I got back from the Conservation Authority was that as long as it meets the MOE requirements, which is basically that it's clean, then it's fine from their perspective. They don't get into whether it's topsoil or fill. But he did say topsoil to you on the phone. Yes, his, his email does say topsoil, but I don't think he's looking at the same kind of uh, definition requirements. Okay, so we're, we're not going to dispute that. No, I'm just... Okay, we're going to talk about definitions. Yeah, we're going to have to get into gradients. We don't need to do all that right now. And <clears throat> I think that when we get to the report itself, the recommendations for additional constraints and or requirements can be defined. And I think Mr. Treble has already 
taken some notes as he's commented there. So I... I think I've come to the bottom of my speakers list. Looking for additional speakers, questions, then um, I, understanding that this is from the same site as the other, as it's not just the same agent or the same process, but it is the same materials. Uh, I believe that the answers or the questions I have would be better addressed at uh, a direction uh, when we get to the report itself. <clears throat> so thank you very much. Do you need that the test now? Or yeah, I would, sure, just hand it to the clerk. It makes her very happy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, please be advised that a technical report is being considered by council this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning and or committee council meeting. There is an attendance sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors which we would ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's meeting, meeting that you place a check mark in the column Mark Gavrick if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. It is suggested that you include your email address with your mailing address and your phone number on the attendance <coughs> sign-in sheet. If there is someone here that is interested in observing council and or committee discussions about a particular issue, it is suggested that you watch the Township's website for posting of agendas to review the items that will be discussed at a Council and or Committee meeting. The agendas for meetings are posted on the Township website at 4 p.m. on Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the website for the public to view. I am uh, This public meeting with respect to the site alteration permit for Mr. Velko Gavrick on land known municipally as 8244 Silver Street. <coughs> or Region Road 65, Caster Center is concluded at the hour of 8.15. This concludes the public meetings, and we will move into council after a short recess uh, where we will change who chairs that meeting and move on to the actual council agenda. Thank you.